The reasonable man adapts himself to the world. The unreasonable one persists in trying to adapt the world to himself. Therefore, all progress depends on the unreasonable man. That's my favorite quote, and it's by a British playwright named George Bernard Shaw. For centuries, unreasonable people have been propelling up progress from people like Copernicus to Einstein, who just couldn't accept the world for what it was and persisted in changing how we see the world. Imagine thinking, this gravity thing, that everything comes down, I think that's wrong. I can, I can do better. Let me just redo that. To people like Elon Musk, who think that we should be interplanetary species, or Zuck, who wants to create the metaverse. They keep taking unreasonable bets, hoping to create the world they want. Of the hundreds of times in my life I've been told I'm being unreasonable, most were not in the glorified Bernard Shaw way. I asked my wife to give me some examples of when I'm being unreasonable. She likes to point these moments out. She proceeded to list out about 10 different things. But one of them was the fact that I still hadn't bought my tickets to fly in for this conference on Monday. That was seven days ago. Not glorified, most just stupid. One moment stands out, though. About 10 years ago, I started this company to make personal training more accessible to everyone. I wanted to do this by making clothing that could measure what your muscles were doing and give you feedback in real time on how to get the most out of your performance. I recall sitting in a famous VC's office on Sand Hill Road, that's the Wall Street of venture capital, when one of the partners told me that our idea was unreasonable, that we should just make a shirt with a hardware monitor in it. People already understood what hardware was, and it'll be pretty easy to make. But to us, that'd just be a faster horse. The world we wanted to create wasn't an improvement of what already existed. We wanted to create something different have an impact, and create the world we wanted to live in. So to do this, all we had to do was you know, create a whole bunch of new technologies, a completely new manufacturing process, and a new user experience. You know, how hard can that be? We were going to go all in on an unreasonable bet. So how do you place an unreasonable bet? What do you even bet on? How do you bring yourself to placing a bet when you know the odds are stacked against you. The most important thing is, make it matter. Whatever you do, make sure it really, really matters to you. The best analogy I've heard is that starting a company is like riding a lion. Everybody on the outside is like, wow, that person's so cool. It must be awesome to ride a lion. They're so brave. Meanwhile, you're on the line going, holy shit, this thing can kill me. Why the hell am I on a line? If the answer to that isn't good enough, you'll get off. Be hyper clear on why you're doing what you're doing. If it's for the money, or the control, or the perception, and not the outcome, there are easier ways of getting there. Doing something that matters will keep you focused when the hard times hit. And trust me, they will. You'll worry about money. You'll worry about people. You'll work on problems you do not care about, but are important to get to where you're trying to get to. But wanting something that's meaningful isn't enough. You need to get lucky. There's a lot of luck involved in this thing. Which is my second point. You have to be prepared for luck to happen. We've been extremely lucky throughout this journey. I'll tell you about the first time that we got really, really lucky. So we started this whole idea of uh, personal training and clothing as our final year design project in college. One of the big challenges was that we needed to make sensors that could measure what your muscles were doing in real time. All the sensors that could do this were in medical devices. You know, big honking machine, sticky electrodes, wires everywhere, and cost a lot of money. If we had that kind of money, 
We'll just pay for a personal trainer. Our advisors told us that we were crazy. We should just make a single functioning sensor. Instead, we built a full functioning shirt with 12 sensors in it that I could wear and work out in, and an app that showed what was happening in real time. I had to skip more class than I attended to make that happen. But we had a working demo on demo day. Mind you, this shirt stank. We, we'd done a lot of testing, but we hadn't figured out how to wash it yet. Rough times. But we wanted to make a functioning sensor shirt because we didn't believe a sensor was compelling enough to convey the idea. Fast forward a few weeks, we're cramming for exams for classes we did not attend. And we get this email from a person who happened to see us at the symposium who wants to fund our company around smart clothing. Incredibly lucky. Which is, the, we've had many moments like this, but the one thing they all have in common is that we did it the work to set ourselves up to be in a position to be lucky. Which is my next point. You can't control when you get lucky. All you can do is work hard to set yourself up to be in a position to be lucky. You're gonna love the grind that this brings along. Working hard, being challenged with unexpected problems, or juggling 10 different things all at the same time. Working 60 hours a week is like my happiest place right now. If you want the normal nine to five, you should pursue that. Maybe you want to work even less and travel. 100% do that. That's what matters to you. But if you are driven to create something different and have an impact, you need to learn how to work hard towards it and enjoy doing that. It's like having reverse FOMO. For anyone who sees this in the future, FOMO is this idea of getting anxiety from not doing, not being out doing stuff. That all being said, you can't work 24 seven. And you should never do this from a place of fear. Like, if I stop working, everything will come crashing down. No, it won't. It'll compromise the quality of the work you do, and you'll resent it. And you definitely will not be able to keep it going for years. It took me a long time to figure this out. But if I don't unplug between Friday after work and Sunday morning, I'm a cranky boy come Monday. Unplugging for me is usually hanging out with some friends, watching like really bad TV, you know, nothing with a plot that goes from episode to episode. But come Monday morning, Sunday morning, I'm up at eight o'clock heading to a coffee shop where I'll probably work there from like eight till five and it's my favorite day of the week. I get to work on the hard problem and or crank out a bunch of work and set myself up for the week. You have to learn to love this grind. The opportunity to learn new things, to be challenged by things you were not expecting, to take a bunch of random pieces of information and distill it down to a framework to make a decision from. Decisions, that's the only other thing you have control over. Sure, you made 100% of shots you don't take, but you have a limited amount of balls. And yeah, I made a hockey quote into a basketball analogy. Every shot you take, every decision you make, implicitly or explicitly, is a bet. You will be intentional about them and own those decisions when you make them. Sometimes that means going in a direction that you believe in. 
Other times, it might be going in a direction somebody else is advocating for. Both of these are decisions you are making. There could be a thousand different reasons why you choose one option versus the other. But be intentional about those. When we started, I was barely old enough to drink. I basically took the perspectives of my advisors as gospel because I didn't know any better. But as time went on, I built confidence in my decisions and figured out how to choose when to listen to their advice and when to go rogue and how to bring people along. Acknowledging and owning your decisions are important because it'll help you reflect and assess how you made a decision. It's good if you think, look back and think about a decision you made and feel stupid. That means you're growing. It's important not to make the same mistake. I remember early on, before we had even shipped any product, we got an offer to buy the company for a decent amount of money. And I said no. I said no because I wanted to build a com big company that accomplished the mission we were on. I don't know if that was the right decision or the wrong one. But I definitely wish I thought about it more than the mission I was on. You know, when you're placing unreasonable bets, there's usually no perfect information there. And most of the time, there doesn't even exist a right or a wrong answer. If there was, it wouldn't be unreasonable. The one thing you can control is how you make a decision and the tools you have for yourself to make those decisions. For me, that's a combination of mental models, essentially things I've learned, my why, like the reason I'm all doing all this stuff, my principles and values, and I like to debate it from different perspectives just to help me understand how to see from different vantage points. I've also developed tools to help me de-risk a decision, like getting data, talking to people, or running experiments. The details of this will probably be different from yours, and I know they'll keep evolving for me. Yeah, so ultimately though, the reason it's important to acknowledge the decisions you're making and being intentional about them, it matters because when you look back, you wanna know that you made the best decision you possibly could have in that moment in time, regardless of how the outcome turns out. You don't want to feel like the outcome happened to you. Because the outcome is not guaranteed. That's the last thing I want to say about making unreasonable bets. The outcome is not guaranteed. I'm telling you this after grinding for 10 years and having to shut the company down. I definitely wish the outcome was different. But I don't regret the time and effort spent going after it. I identified pretty early on that the outcome isn't guaranteed. But I made the conscious decision to go after it anyway, hoping to create the world I wanted to see. I knew that even if we failed, the worst thing that can happen is it find a bunch of different ways that doesn't work. Some of the technologies we developed are now being used in sports and fitness and health. And I'm really glad we were able to contribute to that. But over time, I've started calling this my regret minimization framework, which is actually what I just shared with you guys. One, do shit that matters. Two, whoop, thank you. One, do shit that matters. Two, prepare for luck. There's a lot of luck involved in this. So set yourself up to be lucky. Three, learn to love the grind. 
Because all you can do is work as hard as you can. Four, be intentional about the bets you place. Because you will have to live with them forever. And finally, know the outcome isn't guaranteed, but it is still worth pursuing. I hope you all go after unreasonable things that you believe in. That is how we move the world forward and build a better future. Thank you.